and that's the, the thing about here at the IMF World Champs. You have to compete every day. So you want to get in, get out, take as little damage as you can moving into that final day on Saturday. So we have Nadia Samchik from the Ukraine in the blue corner, Nadia Vera from Mexico in the red. With me, Brian Lacey, alongside Jason Van Skalpik, calling the action and what has been an action-packed cage three. And they're kicking off just as the others left off, straight in each other's faces. A little smile when she came in as well and started throwing. Oh, spinning back fist there. Nicely read. Yeah, Daria saw that coming. Daria looks very relaxed. Look at the head movement there. Looking to counter strike, keep that range. Mexican's arms just seem to extend. Oh, could hear that one crack through the <laughs> arena. Those Green Hill clubs doing work today. Exchange now, Vera looking to take it up against the cage. Look if she works for that single leg. What I remember from the Jackie fight, Daria Samchik moved, progressed on day number one. The grab and a takedown defense was extremely good. Working her against the cage. Uh, you want to see her land some strikes and take a, a page out of relentless Relusha. Just throw some uh, knees to the thighs, maybe some foot stops. Stay busy, but you can see a. Uh, Daria getting the reversal there. Oh, the nice, nice frame. Beat. Nice frame and post off the, the cage from the Mexican fighter. Now they reset in the middle. You can see someone's eating a shot when they just open their jaw and just try and move it around a little bit. <laughs> careful with the head clash there as they go on the entry, but... Another perturbed deep breath there from the Ukrainians. Nadia, they're starting to throw some of those strikes to the inside of the leg. And I can tell you that... Uh, Getting punched in the head hurts, but those knees to the inside of the leg and body shots will steal your soul. Inside and outside, when you see leg kicks, people wonder how. See fights end or change with leg kicks, but that sciatic nerve, when you connect with the shin bone straight through that. It's horrible. I've had hematomas on my leg that will just, will kill everything inside of you. It's not a nice feeling. continues from the Mexican. And Nadia moving forward, as I said, very tough fighters. They'll put the pressure on you. They'll always come forward. They'll take what you got very, very tough. But not Daria lands a nice shot there on the way in. 25 seconds left in this round number one. And this again, the pace in this cage. I don't know if they've been, if the mat's hot or something in there, but there's non-stop action. Every single fight we've had so far has been bell to bell action. And, and the ladies. cardio on everyone, their work rates is just incredible. And last thing to see, an all-female cage inside with a female referee there as well. There we go. Shari from South Africa refing this one. And that shows the progression of the sport as well. Three female referees we have in the tournament this we year. It's the first time I've seen that many female referees. And the corners that I've seen at, you know, at the tournament as well. I mean, it's the same corners that corner the pro fighters. You've got a lot of pro fighters in the corners of these guys. Kian Cowley, who's fighting at the Brave event on Friday, was cornering the yep. Irish fighters. That's so, right. You know, the guys are really being pushed as amateurs by the, the, the pro talent that they train with. Round two underway here, and look at them storm forward. Death jab. Interesting there, Nadia looking for the clinch. Maybe she wants to initiate that takedown. But Daria throwing bombs. See them wide-eyed moving forward. Nadia loves being in a scrap. You can just see her. Uh, you, oh. learn, you learn a lot about countries, but we all know already about the Mexican spirit. Talk about with the Brazilians, Mexicans, those North American. The heart they have, the fighting spirit. Now they're just standing and throwing. <laughs> big shots coming there from Daria. Is Stand and bang, side. Nadia's trying to push up against the cage. Now in front of a corner, trying to work for that takedown. One on the hook there for Daria on the far side. Let's see if Nadia uses a trip. She's been trying to power it down using the upper body, but if you add a trip or an inside step. She needs to uh, show she's a bit busier. She needs to work, try and get a different angle in. But uh, good work by Daria, stopping her from doing too much. And then gets the takedown, lands on top. And that's what we saw in the Jackie Harper fight in round one for Daria. When Jackie Harper, who's an elite grappler at this level, was trying to take her down using all the tricks in the book. Daria was savvy to them, not just savvy, but powerful, strong, and managed to reverse them on a number of times. And right now here, she's the one on top. This is the position that Nadia was fighting so hard for. So now Nadia 
who was hoping to be in this position, tasting some of her own poison. But she's very busy from the bottom as well, moving around a lot, trying to get different angles, trying to push her opponent off. What you haven't seen in this tournament is the people just lying on the bottom and waiting for things to happen, and that's when you start getting yourself into trouble. Nadia pushing Nadia up against the cage, and it's good to see as well from the amateurs, and this shows the evolution of the sport. Athletes knowing how to use the cage in their favor, whether it's grappling, striking, even get up sweeps from the bottom. And there you can see driving her head into the chin and into the face of Nadia. And what that does, it just makes it very uncomfortable for the person at the bottom. And also, when you're controlling the head position, you control where the body's going. You know which side the head's moving to, you can strike on. Pushing her up against the cage makes it very difficult for her to try and spin or move her way out of that position. Coming into the final seconds now of round number two. Story of this round so far, it was Nadia that was looking for the takedown, moving forward, they exchanged some big shots. When they got up against the cage, this is where the technique may be of uh, Daria and the strength and understanding of that position. Round three, the third and final round here in this female strawweight bracket. Again, if you want to know where the food goes when all the athletes are weight cutting, look at the super heavyweights. Look at the super heavyweights, that's right. Oh, big left hook landed there. Nadia ate that and just kept coming forward. Keep on tracking. Oh, a spinning attack as well. Still looking loose with her strikes. But Daria switched on, I like that, stepping in. Now look at the way she angles off. And Nadia just driving through. She hasn't had success from this position in that second round. I'd, I'd be interested and I'm sure she'll be disappointed if Daria can turn this around again into a dominant position for her. I've got to question that, but this is better to see. Now engaging the legs in part of the takedown. She needs to turn it around though. And also what, what she did in that second round, she just took too much time. So it gave her opponent a lot of looks to see where she could reverse it. You want to stay busy and you don't want to give your opponent too many looks. Look for her to drive that head under the chin. There you can see she's starting to do it now. It stops your opponent from being able to see what's happening underneath her. Knees to the body there. And again. Daria doing incredible work though to keep her up. And not, you can look at it looking very composed. This is a that's nice application of pressure. They're using that shoulder, that overhook. Just to unbalance the Mexican. And let's see if she does this again. Watch for the trip. Great strength shown by Daria. Remember these ladies competing in the strawweight division, all of 52.2 kilograms, 115 pounds. Still working their nice little pop knee thrown by Daria. One minute, 10 seconds to go. And again, this was Nadia that engaged this. She's the one that wanted the clinch. Front. She does need to get busier. She needs to throw some throw some shots or do something just to create a bit of damage. But arguably, potentially, and again, this is subjective, this is in the hands of the judges, but she may be two rounds down in this. She possibly could be. And if you're in the corner, you're, you're there on the side of caution. That let's go for the win rather than, uh, than control. Now, I like to give my opinion on where I think the fight's going, but I've been wrong more than I've been right, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> when it comes to predicting where the judges are going. We won't be setting up a betting site between <laughs> no. us then, no. <laughs> Although we might, I might just pull the odds the wrong way. It's just better against go, bet everything against I against you. Oh, if you make me a millionaire that way, I'll still look after you. Although I can say I've won a lot of money off uh, Conor McGregor fight. <laughs> Khabib and uh, Nate Diaz have definitely made me some money in the past. Stockton <laughs> 209 paying up for you there, my friend. That's the final 10 seconds. If this goes the other way to uh, to Daria, you'll have to question the game plan of Nadia coming in. Cards. And we have a split decision. Dun, dun, dun. So your win winner who goes through to the female strawweight finals. In the blue corner for Ukraine, Daria Split decision. Sanchez. Split decision that first round potentially may be going.